In this video, we're going to look at doing nomenclature when both types are mixed together and they're not identified. So what you want to do is think about how you're going to attack this. When you see a compound and you're not given any information about which type it is, the first thing you want to do is identify whether it is ionic or covalent. And the only covalent compounds you're expected to know how to name are binary covalent compounds. So ionic compounds always have a metal or a, and a nonmetal together. Or they can have polyatomic ions. They can be a metal and a polyatomic ion or two polyatomic ions together. If a compound has a polyatomic ion in it, it is ionic always. Uh, if it's a covalent compound, a binary covalent compound, it will have two nonmetals. So make sure that you know where your metals and your nonmetals are on the periodic table. If you don't remember, go back to your notes about the periodic table and check them. All right, so if you determine that it is an ionic compound, you want to name the positive ion first. If it's a polyatomic ion, remember that we don't change the name. If it is a metal, you name the metal. And then if we don't know the charge, so anything that is not in group one, group two, silver, zinc, or aluminum, those ones we don't know the charges for, we need to give a Roman numeral showing the charge of the metal. Then we want to give the name of the negative ion. If it's a polyatomic ion, always keep the name the same. We never change the name of a polyatomic ion. If it is a monatomic ion, meaning one that we have to look up on the periodic table, that just the element, then we're going to change the end of that to an IDE ending. So chlorine to chloride, sulfur to sulfide, and so on. If it is covalent, we have two nonmetals, and we, what we want to do is use our Greek prefixes. We only use the Greek prefixes for the covalent compounds. We only use Roman numerals for ionic compounds. Never use one for the other. So with binary covalent compounds, we want to use the Greek prefix to tell the number of the first element and then name it. Remember, for the first element, if there's only one of that element or no subscript, we do not use the mono prefix. For the second element, we use the Greek, pre Greek prefix to tell the number of the, that element. And it doesn't matter. All, all of them are used, even for mono. And then we want to name that element, but change the ending of that element to IDE. So let's look at some practice problems. All right. So let me put these three up. Let's start with this top one. First thing we want to do is identify what type of compound. You should see that barium is a metal and SO3 is one of your polyatomic ions. You should have your reference packet out in front of you right now. So we know that barium is a metal, sulfite is a polyatomic ion. Barium is one of our group one, group two, silver, zinc, and aluminum. So we just name the metal barium. We do not need to give it a Roman numeral because we know the charge. And then sulfite. Please be careful. Remember that there are lots of different versions of sulfate, sulfite, sulfide. So you just really want to pay attention to that. Take your time on these. All right, let's tackle the next one. When you look at this, you may be saying to yourself, well, these elements are all nonmetals. But remember, we only know how to name compounds that have two. So the fact that this is a polyatomic and this is a polyatomic ion should tell you that this is an ionic compound. When we have polyatomic ions, we don't ever change the name. We know the charges, so we can just go ahead and call this ammonium, which is our positive ion and then phosphate, which is our negative ion. No Roman numerals needed. Now looking at this next compound, two elements, both nonmetals, this should tell you that this is a covalent compound. So we need to use a, our Greek prefixes, except if there is only one of that first element. So no mono there, it's just phosphorus, 
and then our Greek prefix for our second element is five, which is penta. And then we're going to change the end of bromine to IDE, so phosphorus, penta, bromide. Remember to work on memorizing the uh, Greek prefixes and those Roman numerals because you will need to know those. Here are a few more. This one. Okay, so let's start up here. Uh, Fe2O3, two elements. Hopefully, you recognize that iron is a metal, oxygen is a nonmetal. So, what you see here is a metal that is not in group one, group two, silver, zinc, or aluminum. It's one of the transition metals, so we do not know the charge of that metal. We're going to have to give it a Roman numeral. We know the charge on oxygen. Oxygen has a negative two charge. So if there are three of those, we know our overall negative charge is negative six. In order to make it a neutral compound, that's going to be a positive six. And if we have two irons, each one is going to be a plus three. Remember that the Roman numeral doesn't tell you how many of that atom there are. It tells you the charge on that ion. So it's going to be iron, just name that, ion, and then we're going to give the Roman numeral three in parentheses, and then the oxygen changes to oxide. All right, for this next one, that is ICL3. And hopefully you recognize that iodine is a nonmetal, as is chlorine, so that's binary covalent. No Greek prefix here because I is only one, so we don't need the mono, so it's going to be iodine. And then the three on the chlorine tells us that's going to be tri, change the ending to chloride. All right, let's look at this last one. Na2Cr2O7. Hopefully you see that there is a metal, sodium, which is in group one, so we know it's charged. We always like that. And then you see that this Cr2O7, chromium is a metal too, but chromium is part of a polyatomic ion. There's one that's CrO4, which is chromate, and then there's Cr2O7, which is dichromate. So we know the charge on sodium, so we just need to list the name of the metal. And then Cr207 is our polyatomic ion, so it is dichromate. Just be really careful when you're looking those up on those charts. All right, let's try a couple more. We're going to go the reverse direction now from name to formula. All right, so with these, you always want to start with what you know about something. So chromium is a metal. It's got a Roman numeral. If it has a Roman numeral, we know this is an ionic compound, and you can see carbonate, one of your polyatomic ions. So we've got chromium with a plus 3 charge, and we have carbonate, which has a 2 minus. So we need to think about that least common multiple of the two numbers, 2 and 3, which would be 6. So in order to have a plus 6, we need two chromium, so Cr2. And in order to have a minus 6, we're going to need three carbonates, which means we're going to have to put that in parentheses. So CO3, and that'll be a 3. Iodine trichloride. Hopefully you recognize this from our last one. Remember, when it doesn't have a prefix, there's just one. Chloride means it's Cl, and the 3 is the subscript because of the tri. Then there's magnesium sulfide. Magnesium has a, is a metal, and sulfur is a nonmetal, so sulfide, the IDE, tells you that it's from the periodic table for the most part. Uh, and then we know that magnesium is a metal. We know the charge. It's in group 2, so it's 2 plus. Sulfide is 2 minus. Least common multiple is two, so we just need one of each. It's going to be MgS. Let's try a few more. All right, looking at this first one, sulfur tetrachloride. Sulfur is a nonmetal. 
Tetra is a Greek prefix and chlorine, chloride, that's a nonmetal. So we know that this is covalent. So it's going to be S, no mono there, but just one S, Cl4. The next one we have lithium hydroxide. Lithium is a metal. Hydroxide, don't get confused about this. It's not hydrogen, it's not oxygen. It is a polyatomic ion that is OH. So lithium is a one plus charge. Hydroxide is a one minus. If the charges are equal, we just need one of each. So Li, OH. Remember that you do not need parentheses on this polyatomic ion unless you have to use a subscript on it. In this case, we didn't. Now we have tin 2 fluoride. Tin is a metal. You can see the Roman numerals. That tells you it's ionic. And then we have fluorine, which is a nonmetal. So tin has a 2 plus charge. Fluorine has a 1 minus. And so we know that our least common multiple of 2 and 1 is 2. So we need 1 tin. We need two fluorines to make an overall negative two charge, so it's going to be SNF2. If you need help on this, please come and see me for some extra help and get some tutoring on this because it's really important. After this unit, I'll expect you to know these moving forward. Have a great day.